call now is to the member for Longman. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I rise uh, to also talk on the Prime Minister's statement on Iraq and Syria. Uh, Australians over the recent uh, times have watched uh, the nightly news and have picked up the daily newspapers to see uh, what the Prime Minister has called acts of pure evil. Uh, we have seen the uh, brutal, abhorrent uh, and disgusting acts of uh, what is fundamentally a large-scale, coordinated and organised death cult uh, across uh, northern Iraq uh, and Syria. And while uh, the uh, spread of the influence of ISIS uh, obviously represents a significant threat to uh, security and stability uh, in the Middle East and particularly in uh, northern Iraq and Syria, uh, it also presents a very strong domestic security risk uh, here in Australia. Uh, we know that uh, there are about 100 Australians that are fighting uh, with ISIS uh, in northern Iraq and Syria and they are being radicalised, uh, they are committing these terrible acts. Uh, and there is, of course, the potential uh, for them to bring uh, that mindset, uh, that approach, uh, and all the associated risks that go with that uh, back uh, to our shores and present a significant domestic security risk. So uh, I strongly support uh, the actions uh, of the Australian government uh, in uh, northern Iraq. Uh, First and foremost, we are participating in a strong humanitarian program. President Obama said uh, that uh, the religious and ethnic minorities that uh, are facing uh, severe persecution at the hands of ISIS, being forced to either convert to, uh, or effectively beheaded, uh, uh, those religious and ethnic minorities in northern Iraq are facing, uh, as President Obama said, potential genocide. Uh, and Australian participation in the humanitarian effort has ensured that uh, those people can uh, survive uh, in the mean term and uh, hopefully uh, at one point be free from uh, that persecution. And if I can say uh, briefly, Mr Deputy Speaker, in the last few years I've been fortunate enough to spend some time with uh, our men and women who serve out of our Minhad Air Base in the UAE, which is where we provided these humanitarian airdrops through uh, two C-130 Hercules, and I've, I've been on those Hercules with the, uh, the air crew, and they are incredibly uh, professional and dedicated service men, men and women who are, uh, always have the humanitarian mission at the front of mind, always have that compassionate appro approach uh, at front of mind, and, and don't think twice before they put themselves in harm's way. So can I commend them uh, on the work that they've done on behalf of, uh, of, of all Australians? Uh, we should all be proud of the effort that they've done in delivering uh, that humanitarian uh, program. Uh, can I also say that uh, uh, I support uh, the Australian government in any further actions that it might be taking uh, to address the risk uh, that ISIS poses in the region. Uh, we have provided logistical support to drop weapons to Kurdish fighters in northern Iraq, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to visit Iraq as well. And uh, uh, as people on the ground will tell you, the Kurdish fighters are some of the best fighters uh, in the region. Uh, they are strongly rejecting uh, the threat to, of ISIS and have had recent success uh, in Mosul and uh, other parts of northern Iraq in rejecting uh, the threat that they present. And, and I'm, I'm proud to say that the Australian government is supporting them uh, through logistical drops of, of weapons. I think that is an important part. And should our mission expand to, uh, in concert with our allies, uh, with clear objectives uh, uh, and obviously with a humanitarian uh, mind frame and, and uh, uh, focus, uh, I think that the Australian government should take further steps because of the, uh, one, as a first world nation, we can't stand on the sidelines and say uh, that it is okay for these acts to happen. It's okay for these acts to be um, displayed across our TV screens and newspapers. Uh, we, we have to uh, rise to meet that challenge and we have to do that collectively with our allies and should uh, the United States as our principal ally, but uh, as other allies in the region request uh, greater assistance from the Australian government, I would strongly support uh, such an action. I also strongly support the Prime Minister uh, and the government in their uh, recent measures to improve domestic security arrangements uh, as a result of this threat. Uh, there's over $600 million for greater coordination of, uh, of our security agencies in Australia and uh, through Operation Sovereign Borders we've seen what can be achieved when you have greater cooperation between uh, our security forces uh, there's greater cooperation with the United States in sharing information. 
uh, and there are also programs to stop the radicalisation of particularly young people in Australia, which is so important. Uh, we don't want this sick uh, death cult and its, uh, and its uh, abhorrent mindset to set in with any Australians, uh, and these are strong measures to, uh, to fight uh, that clear and ever-present uh, threat. So, uh, in conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, can I say uh, uh, I am proud of the work of our servicemen and women uh, in delivering our assistance in northern Iraq. Uh, I'm proud of the work of the government uh, working with our allies to ensure that uh, we can continue to have uh, not only a safe and secure uh, global uh, community, but also a safe and secure uh, domestic environment here in Australia. And uh, I commend the Prime Minister's statements to the House.